If you're listening to this podcast, there's a good chance that you're a hunter or you just enjoy the great outdoors. Now's the time to step up. There have been countless efforts to vilify hunters, denounce the legitimacy of the science-based wildlife management model. There is no science to this stance and it is solely emotionally charged. We don't want to see what happened with the grizzly hunt replay itself again with the remaining large carnivores and big game species. It's a slippery slope, folks. We need to stand together. Now is the time for hunters to be united across all organizations and show our combined support. Please go to wildsheepsociety.com forward slash act now and follow the steps. It doesn't take much time and it will help save the future of hunting. This applies to residents and non-residents alike. Please let's use our voice and be heard. On with the show, folks. This is episode 28 of the Wilderness Locals podcast. On this episode, myself and Waste Dog have on Lauren from Trousdale Media. This podcast is brought to you by Kafaru International, the toughest hunting gear on the planet, bar none. Frontiersman gear, high quality, completely custom handmade knives in the heart of the peace country. And as always, we're brought to you by Just Shooting Arrows, BC's premier archery shop. So you guys do all kinds of stuff, eh? It looks here like you do everything from, uh, I I mean, I see photos here of caribou hunts, sheep hunts, goat hunts, all the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're pretty lucky this year. Uh, we had kind of everything in, in, in one, one hunt. The one that I did with the journal boys, we got a, um, yeah, like, a, a we had a caribou, a moose and a goat. And we almost killed a, a stone. We got pretty close to killing a stone sheep on the on the last day. That's awesome. That's nice. the hunt that all the boys went on, eh? Pardon me? That's the hunt that all those guys went on t- together, eh? Yeah, yeah, there's four of us. That's awesome. And I think there was somebody like uh I think somebody shot their first caribou on that trip, right? Yeah. So Jane yeah, so it was both both James and uh Matt Ward. Mm-hmm. Uh it was both their first kind of mountain like proper kind of mountain, like Northern BC hunt. Rad. So, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool seeing, seeing both those guys, like their eyes light up and, um, just to experience like a hunt like that, because like I've done it before, Yankee's done it a bunch. And, and once you do one, you, you, you just get hooked on, on Northern BC. I find like there's not, there's nothing that beats Northern BC in my opinion. It's a pretty photogenic place too. Oh, it makes yeah, it makes my life way easier. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, everywhere, everywhere you turn, there's just it's just awesome, awesome landscapes and and just unique, cool country. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. It's uh, I don't know if like uh, what was Lander calling it the Serengeti of the North. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's pretty pretty cool spot. Um, so we normally start these things by saying, who are you? What do you do? And how did you get started hunting? Yeah. So, uh, my name is Lauren Trousdell. Uh, I'm a full-time firefighter. I work for the city of Port Coquitlam and, um, yeah, I started hunting um, a little bit later, uh, in, in my family, kind of my grandpa hunted a fair bit yeah. and then it kind of, it kind of skipped a generation. And my dad was never really that into it. And then, uh, I grew up kind of two of my best buddies growing up, uh, both on own farms. So we spent a lot of time just messing around on the farm, shooting starlings and, and stuff like that, like killing rats with pellet guns, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, and as soon as I was old enough to get my firearms license and my hunting license, and then I just went and did that at 18, I think it was. Yeah. And then just kind of just kind of started from there with, with two buddies, basically. That's awesome. I have a, uh, I have a super similar story. Uh, my grandfather was like a super hardcore hunter and like lived for hunting and it, it skipped a generation in my family too. And it's uh, reared its head again here in our, in our family. So I, yeah, for sure. we'd, we'd be the exact same. I think we were just, as kids, we were just so busy with, with sports and stuff. Like I played pretty high level hockey until 
till I was in like grade eight or nine. And then I started racing mountain bikes at a, at a really high level across BC. And, uh, my brother played high level hockey. He played junior A and, uh, and that, and then with my other brother, he was kind of into everything. So, um, we just didn't really have time for that kind of stuff as, as kids really. Yeah. And, uh, we did like a little bit of fishing and that. And every time I visited my grandparents, we do, we do big like fish, like go up, get guided and go, go fishing. And, um, but we never really, we never just really had time. All our, all our travel time, all, all everything was just around, around sports and mountain biking and that kind of thing. Yeah. That's funny. That's like uh, literally the exact same story as me. Like, um, pl- played lacrosse and hockey growing up and then, you know, grade eight or nine rolled around and it was full focus on racing bikes. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah that's, yeah that's exactly. what i know that's what i noticed with uh like even my kids it's uh there's a lot of different things pulling at them different sports and f- hockey and baseball and everything so i really try to make time to um to uh get make sure they're out hunting with me as much as possible for sure and oh, it's got to be getting even tougher these days because with with sports you have to it's everything's so competitive and and there's so much going on and if if you if you're especially if you're if your kids are into it and they're and they're good at it you want to give them every chance to succeed and then that means spring hockey and and hockey camps and all the all this stuff right like it it never ends yeah no kidding i mean you and i know that firsthand though too right so with uh, the hockey stuff, it can get out of hand. Oh, hockey! Yeah, hockey is a it's a it's another beast for sure. For sure. So you uh, so you started hunting as kind of an adult. Then, um, what was sort of your first uh, your first kind of stab at, at at getting into the woods? So we our family owned a cabin uh, just north of Pemberton on Gates Lake. Oh, cool! And uh, so. We, we spent some time out that way. And, uh, like I remember me and, and my good buddy chase there, uh, we got, we got our licenses and we're all good to go. And we didn't really have any, any mentors of any sorts. I know one of his uncles was, was pretty, pretty big into hunting, but he, he was kind of, he was always kind of busy and he, I mean, he would maybe help us out a little bit here, or there or, or so on, but we didn't really have any, any sort of, it was just, we were just figured it out as we went. And then uh, I remember our, our, our first, probably our first trip, uh, we went up there and we stopped in the, uh, the old local sporting goods store in, uh, in Pemberton mm-hmm. and, uh, just, just a couple of like just noob sticks walking in there and we're kind of just like sussing it out. The guys at the store are super nice. They're, they're basically like, yeah. And we were asking them like, Oh, like where, where to go kind of thing. Just, BSing. Yeah. And they're like, Oh yeah, I got it. It's like, Oh, it's good. You just gotta you buy these, you buy these calls, get this, get yourself. He gets, he's like, you got, you guys grunt tube. And I'm like, uh, we're like, no, no, we don't have anything like that. He's like, Oh, here get, he's like, he's basically sold us all, all grunt tubes. And, uh, it was basically like, Hey, you go like, go into the bush, go up here. And then he's like, just, just lay on this grunt tube a little bit. And he's like, be ready, man. They're like, they'll be coming. Like, they'll be coming out of the fog, like be ready. Like you'll, you'll get into some deer and we're like, Holy smokes. Like we're going to just call these things in. And of course, like a whole trip, we didn't, we didn't see really anything. And, and, uh, and just, just, just mobbing around the bush, driving around. Chase is one of those guys that like any, any little, he was more four by fouring than, than hunting any little road he could drive up. He was, you're, you're just like bush scraping both sides of the vehicle and you're just like Matt, driving for hours. It's <laughs> 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 just, uh, it was, it was fun. And, um, yeah, we didn't get anything probably the first year. I don't think we, we killed anything, but, um, had a good time. And then it wasn't until a little bit later. Uh, maybe the next year that I shot my, my first buck and, uh, my, my first one was, it was an archery kill actually too. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Is that, was that, that, uh, that blacktail? <clears throat> no. So it was a blacktail though. So my same buddy there, um, they owned their family owned, I think 90 acres on Gabriel Island. Oh, cool. So, uh, we went over there and, um, we ch- chase, chase blacktails around basically their, their acreage there and um 
yeah, we had, uh, we had gone like well, the weekend before and then seen some deer, chased some deer around. Then we went back that weekend. And, um, the first night we had, we had set up tree stands. I mean, we were, we were young and we were both making like decent money at the time. So we had bows and tree stands and, and, uh, anything, anything that you could buy that you were like, if I was like, Oh, this is pretty cool. Like we could maybe get a tree stand to this. He's like, yeah, like I'm in like, let's do it. So any, we, we, we were so easy just to talk each other into, into buying anything for hunting. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so we both had tree stands and bows and, and we're set up on, on their little back 40 there. And the first night I didn't have any box box come in, but, uh, late in the evening I had like three or four just does just feeding like right under my tree stand. And, uh, I got kind of pinned down there for a while. I had, I had to wait like an extra hour or so before I could come down after just, uh, I didn't want to spook anything. And then, so the next day we're, I'm like, well, I'm setting up in the same, in the same spot and just like, okay, I'm going to change my spots a little bit. And, uh, I, I had explained to him how the deer kind of come out in the field and then cut across, did like a, basically a big J and then cut across, uh, the bottom of my tree stand. And, uh, so Chase sets up exactly like just to head, like maybe, maybe like 30 yards from me, just ahead, <laughs> right where the deer came out the, the night before. And I'm like, what are you doing? And, uh, Chase is kind of, he's had a bit of fear heights. So, uh, and they're coming, the deer are coming like kind of off the top of this hill and down. So he's, he's set up and he's maybe, maybe 10 feet off the ground, which puts him, <laughs> puts them like right at eye, like right at eye level with the, with the deer where they're coming down. I love it. And I'm like, Chase, you're going to have to go higher, man. Like you're, you're literally right in the path and you're right at like perfect eye level. you like, he'd be better off on the ground. He's like, Oh no, this is good. This is good. And then finally I convinced him to go up a little higher and, and we get set up and, um, not, not much time passes. And this little, this little two, two point comes out cruises cruises basically right through same as same as exactly where we we planned he would come out basically and um i i i'm set set up and i can kind of if i peek around my tree i can kind of just barely see um where chase is but i i can't really this you're looking through like a wall some branches and stuff and you can't really tell but i can hear some rustling around over there and uh i don't know what's going on but and then, um, this, this little buck is, is right in, right in front of him. Maybe like it would have been 20 yards, perfect broadside, just feeding right in front of him. And I, in my head, I'm just getting so frustrated. Like a minute goes by, two minutes goes by, three minutes goes by. And, uh, it felt like forever, but this, uh, this buck is still there and, and nothing, nothing, nothing. And uh, finally, like, starts slowly, slowly feeding towards me. And I'm like, why, why hasn't Chase shot this thing? And um, finally, finally, it pops out on my side and it's 20 yards, like, perfectly broadside. Thwap. Yeah, let, let, let an arrow fly and, and uh, perfect shot. And it walks maybe 10 yards and just, like, does the old flip over backwards kind of thing. And, and, um, yeah, it's done. And then, uh, I go, I go, we get, get to chase. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, why, why didn't you shoot the thing? He's like, Oh man. He's like, uh, I dropped my bow out of my tree stand. And I, and he, <laughs> he, he dropped his bow out of the tree stand. And then he's like, looks looking down and he looks up and then there's this deer walking right exactly towards him. So he was just, just sitting there, no bow, nothing felt like fell out of the tree sound. And that's what the rustling I heard was. And, uh, <laughs> I just, we were just laughing. Oh, and the awesome. whole thing was like kind of a comedy. So, uh, of course we smoked it right through the lungs and, and, uh, it was our like first, first year ever. And, and so, um, Chase's grandparents li- live on the farm there. So of course we, we call them and they, they bring a little tractor down uh to lift it up so we can gut it and stuff and chase's grandparents are out there both gr- grandpa and grandma are out there and um this thing had, had just like with any archery kill they, they bleed out so fast right so yeah there was so much blood just from just from it pumping out uh double lunged them like tons tons of blood all over the grass and um so we're hanging this thing 
And of course it's like, it's like the old school, old school mentality where you gotta, you gotta slip, you gotta slit the throat, hang it upside down, slit the throat, get all the blood out. And, um, so Chase's, Chase's grandparents are, are on us and, and they're good. They want, they want us to do everything. So we got the thing hung up and they're like, okay, yeah, we'll just, um, he's like, you killed it. You, you get in there and, uh, you slit his throat. Let's, let's get all the blood out. So, um, I go, okay, yeah, sure. Sounds good. So I, I do like a big slit and, and not like nothing comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and they're like, oh no, you like you didn't get the jugular. Like you get, you gotta get, you gotta get in there. And I was like, okay, like in my head, I'm, I'm like, it, there's like, look at the grass. Like there's, there's, there's not much blood left in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I, I, I keep cutting, keep cutting. They're like, ah, oh, like no, you, like get in there, like get it, like come on. And then uh, the, basically, like this, this. <laughs> This thing is like the, the this thing's like mangled. Like I've almost cut the entire head right off, and finally I'm like, not like I think the blood's all gone. Like we shot it with a with the arrow. Like look at the grass. Like the, there's nothing left in there, and uh, and finally they're like, oh okay. But it was just like it was, yeah, it was it was funny. And then we got it all all set up, and um, yeah, it was it was good. If first first kill with the bow and uh yeah there's nothing there's nothing like it really yeah you can't ask for uh for much better a much better first than that right with a little bit of comedy a good story and uh and a really good memory there with getting it done with the bow yeah yeah so that's awesome and uh <laughs> I, uh, uh, I'm going to go hunt whitetail with Wacy this, uh, this fall at his place there. And I, I, I can, I can, I can picture myself dro- dropping a bow out of a tree and, and that being me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make you slip the throat when we get it hanging. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh man. That's awesome. So uh how did uh how did kind of stuff progress from there? I mean you're you're a long way from uh from from sawing heads off deer to make sure they've bled now, you know? Yeah. 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 So then from there, uh we're all obviously hooked and 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 pumped up and and uh but back back then it was like the main, the main focus then was, was, was deer and, uh, maybe putting in for, we put in for a couple of LEH moose draws, um, never really drew much. And, um, yeah. And then, uh, I think I shot a little four by four muley after that. And then, um, and then just after that, my, my other buddy, they had a blueberry farm and they, they bought, so they had, I think it was like 250 acres, um, just in Coquitlam and, um, we had access on there and, um, it was just a, it was a really cool place. You could, you could walk, you could walk through the fields. I used to go af- after work all the time, just, just to go any time of the year, you, you just walk the fields and, and, um, you could find, it w- would not be unusual to just to go in in an afternoon and, and walk through the fields and, and find, 20 20 30 bears in in an hour and a half just just cruising just cruising the fields and looking through the blueberry rows oh, wow, yeah. uh, it was just just packed like just packed and and um they they were of the mindset like um the bears do a lot of damage um to the to the blueberry plants and everything so um the, the more you could take out of there the better basically so um, it was kind of, it was a cool spot and, and, um, we had, we were into the archery thing, so we could just go after work or, or whenever and, uh, just, just chase bears or deer or whatever was in season. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, the first year we found a pretty cool buck that, uh, my brother shot with his bow. It was just like a one eyed, pretty thick. I think it was a three by two. Uh, but just pretty mat, like good mass and just like a kind of a solid, but kind of funky looking, weird, weird looking buck, one eye on them. Um, yeah, just cool buck. So Mark shot that one. Um, that one was a bit of a gong show too, but, uh, <laughs> got, that, got that one done. And then, uh, the following year we had a bunch of cams set up and everything. And, um, we heard kind of rumors the year before that there was, 
there was like a really nice buck in there, like a, like a record book buck in there. And, um, so we had a bunch of pictures and, um, it was, it was pretty cool. We saw, we saw this buck grow from, from nothing basically to just these two huge, like clubs as velvet clubs and then grow all the way, all the way through. And then, um, come hunting season, we were, we were basically just chasing this, this one buck. And, um, yeah, so it, it, it took, it took a while and then they're like black tails are pretty cagey as it is. And, <laughs> and h- hunting the blueberry farms are, are a little bit trickier than you think. Cause there's, there's so much room for them to s- disappear and they can cross over rows pretty easily. And, um, you, uh, like stalking in on you can't once you're kind of committed to a row you can't really cut cut across from one row to the other you just make too much noise especially when you're getting in in fairly close mm-hmm, so you yeah. kind of got to pick a row and then wait or or kind of wait at the end of the row where it come where it meets the row one of the roads and uh wait for the wait for them to pop out there so we, we spent a oh, month, months, ch- like kind of following this deer and then, and then chasing this deer and we'd go, go off to work and, and just see, see what we could do. And, um, man, I got so close to this thing so many times and, and couldn't, couldn't get it done. Uh, I was within five yards, five yards of him before, uh, just too close. Couldn't, couldn't draw my bow without, without him spooking and, and, He's just on the other side. Like there's one, basically one blueberry row in between us. And then I had him coming out the end of a row and I was made 20 yards. He was coming out the end of the row and he's still, still in the row. So there was a couple bushes in between us. So I drew my bow early anticipating him coming out and he knew something was up, turned around, spooked. And then, um, so fi- finally, after a f- probably a f- few different attempts over different days, um, I get him coming out the end of the row again. And uh, this time I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to wait till he's a little bit past me. Uh, I'll let him walk out, wait, wait till he's a little bit past until he's a little bit quartering away. And then um, I'll draw and, and shoot. And um, I remember he pops out and I just r- remember shaking so bad that – I, I was trying to like kneel or something. I was kneeling, but I couldn't kneel. And my, my, my knee was just, sh- you know, how you, sometimes your knee just like shakes, vi- like shakes violently. Oh yeah. It's like just type rater leg. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just, it just vibrates. So that's going on. And I'm just this, he's at, at 20 yards, uh, like a nice quarter away shot. And I'm just, I'm just vibrating. So I, draw my bow back. And then as soon as I, as soon as I anchor, uh, he just looks like dead straight at me. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't range him or anything. Uh, I didn't really have time. I kind of, I just figured he was, we were, we were pretty close. I figured he was around 20 yards and, uh, anchored and he looks at me and then I just take a quick, quick second and then let this arrow fly. And, um, like per- perfect double long. He walked maybe 40 yards and then, uh, went down. And I mean, at that time I'd kind of, I knew it was a good buck, but I didn't, I, I didn't really know any better. And you hear rumors of like Chase or Chase and t- Chase's uncle was saying, Oh yeah, there's like, there's a, there's a, there's a big buck up there. And, and Mark, uh, Mark Robinson who, <laughs> who owned the farm, he, they're they're classic both those farm boys are classic classic like over exaggerators there's <laughs> oh, you, you see, oh man there's this yeah it's a it's a beauty like it's a record and mark would say oh yeah someone will pay you like man if you kill that thing things worth like 50 grand someone pay you 50 grand for that for that set of horns blah blah, blah. and i'm like okay okay so we end up killing this thing and uh and it's just a such a such a gnarly unique buck it's super super narrow um like pop can really heavy bases all webbed out and um yeah just 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 stoked like awesome 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 buck and then um yeah i knew it was like i knew it was good but like didn't really care to get it scored or anything at that point and then um the abbotsford i think the abbotsford show rolled around and they had the free scoring and everything so i was like oh like 
take this thing down there just to just to see it, <laughs> just yeah. to kind of see what it does. And I kind of wanted just to, yeah, just just to show it off and be like, oh, here, here, like, dear, check this thing out. And uh, I I walk in the show with it, and I get to the, the score, like the booth there, the, B, the BC Records guys, and uh, as I'm walking up, you can just see them like like middle stop their conversation and just like or stare like st- staring at me and i was like ah come to come to get the thing this thing scored and they're like holy smokes like what is this thing and i was like oh yeah it's just the black tail that i got if you could yeah score it that'd be great and then um so they they end up scoring it for me and um yeah just just absolute toad i think it was 156 and 68 gross and and uh, 146 and 68 um, was was the the net score. Do you so remember, it, it uh, slots in it. Do you remember any of the mass yeah. measurements on that deer? No, oh, I don't. I would have to look at this the score sheet. I don't remember any of the mass measurements. Okay, but, that's um, cra- crazy for a black tail, though. It's yeah, it, it's it's wild, yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. The photos of that deer are just insane. I mean, um, it's kind of nice that that you shot it on a place that you can talk about since you can't hunt there anymore. And, uh, um, well, I mean, it's not nice that we can't hunt there anymore, but it's nice that you don't have to like, you don't really have to conceal the story that much. It's, it's, it's cool. What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. What do you mean? You can't hunt there anymore, Ty? So, so it was, it was in the, uh, within the city of, uh, Coquitlam and, uh, they changed their bylaws. So, um, now that so basically to shut down all all archery hunting because we used to be able to hunt uh, with shotguns in there as long as it was um, like not like no single projectiles and then uh, with, with archery equipment but that's all all been shut down in the yeah um, probably like eight eight years ago now okay yeah yeah i think like yeah there's 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 no hunting in coquitlam city limits like you said and uh um like i think you have to be like right right out of their uh right out of their space there now so um that's cool though man like i've uh i've always wanted to mess around on some um like planted row farm like that like blueberry stuff and i I just haven't had the chance to but if man it looks fun it looks super fun and like it's funny it's like you you, i think i think people almost assume it would be easy in there but like you're saying i could see it being super 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 tough yeah when when do the uh blueberries come in like to write that the that's that when the deer are in there or uh no they're they're just they're in there all all year basically Oh, yeah. Um, they always come, there's like a little sanctuary in between two farms that they, I think they would kind of bed in and pretty thick. And, um, then they would cross, cross the ditch and, and come into the one end of the fields. Um, basically, basically every, every night you would see some deer in there. So it, it was nice. You can go any day after work, you, you just go in there and you, you know, you would see some deer, um, and and you'd get a few stalks in or 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 whatever like it was just a, it was just something to do every night and and back then didn't, no no kids or obviously or anything and uh, you're young and you got nothing but time so it was like every every day after work like you're just like what right, let's go check it out and and see what see what's going on and uh, yeah it, it was it was an awesome awesome like you, like you said earlier you were in that you said there was lots of bears in them rows <clears throat> i was just thinking i'd be in there eating blueberries yeah. with the bears and not doing much hunting so oh. yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. oh that's funny um so so kind of moving forward a little bit here when did you get into the mountains so it was it was a while later really like our first sheep hunt was uh five six years ago now and um before that we had planned to do a big uh mark and i had planned to do a big um like a mule deer hunt he was living in quinell at the time and um so we were planning on meeting halfway and uh we found like kind of a cool mountain range that we were gonna hunt and that was a plan we were gonna do like a kind of a big big mule deer hunt alpine mule deer and um kind of just get things dialed and then after that we were gonna go go for sheep and um but then that year i ended up 
Uh, I ended up separating my shoulder pretty good right before the season and uh, I was off work and stuff. So I wasn't, wasn't able to go. So that kind of got kiboshed. And then after that, um, we, we decided to do our, our first, first sheep trip. And then that was with the first two years we, we did, um, uh, archery and, uh, we kind of, we are, we kind of had a, some intel and we knew of kind of a, a, a good spot. So the, the plan was to, uh, we knew we'd, we knew for sure we'd get into sheep there. So the plan was to like, okay, well, let's do archery hunt, um, get in there. And at least we know we're going to see a bunch of sheep. Uh, we can get eyes on them. We can get, get a feel for it, glassing age them. And, and, um, it, it'll be, it'll be good. That way we just, just get a feel for it and get some experience. Like it would suck to go on a sheep hunt and, um, for your first one and then just not see anything or, or something like that. So we're like, let's just do this. Um, it's pretty easy access and everything. So let's, let's go check it out, see some sheep. And if we can, um, if we can get one with a bow, then that's great. If not, like at least we get some experience and we, we see some sheep and, um, uh, it's a good time. So we ended up doing that the first year and, um, it was just, it was just an eye opening trip. Um, so we saw a ton of Rams, um, few other people in there, but everyone was, everyone we met was super nice. Like talked to a lot of different guys. And then, uh, we were on, went around the backside because we saw there was a couple other guys hunting the front. So we went around the back and, um, had it basically all to ourselves and, and I just remember like, even to this day, nothing really like it. You just, we would just hear these like thuds like ring out and, um, the sound just travels like crazy. And it's just these rams just, just button heads. And this is, this is early August. And I've never seen, I've never really seen them like button heads, stones, like before any, any, any of the other trips, but these sheep are just just going at it and this one this one sheep was just a total dick uh he's just anytime anytime the sheep were, were bedded down he would just walk over and and like hoof them or give them like a little jab with his horns or they're like he was like he would kick the other like they're like kicking each other in the nuts and stuff <laughs> Like you just, they got the sheep have like the biggest balls on them too. Like the ball to the ball to body ratio on those on stone <laughs> sheep is is got to be got to be next to none. And you just see them walk up, like kick like kick another sheep in the balls, and uh, that sheep would get up, move, and you just take its bed or stuff like that. So we got we got on these sheep pretty pretty good, and it's a cool spot. The sheep never really go too far, so you can get in pretty close, and. um yeah, we, we ended up chasing these sheep for a long time. And, um, yeah, I ended up, I ended up above. So I, end, we kind of split up and we got on, there's this, this one really, really dark ram that was all, all scarred up. Like you could see scars all kind of all over his body and these, these um, good ram, uh, under the nose, but, uh, we figured he was legal on age. Uh, he had these really nice, dark, dark rings. And, um, yeah, so we were kind of like, okay, this is, this is the, this is the Ram. Like, let's, let's get after this guy. And, um, so I remember stalking, they're kind of moving. I remember stalking in and I come over this little rise and, uh, I'm just easing over, easing over, easing over. And then Mark's kind of way up above kind of watching in case they come around. <clears throat> and I'm probably 30, 35 yards from, from the Rams. And I kind of, just pop my head over and, and, uh, I'm looking and I, I don't see him. And then there was one other, there's one other one that was legal in the group too. And he was, he was there. He was within probably 30, 35 yards. I ranged him, but then I couldn't, I couldn't find the one that I wanted. And, um, then I glance up and of course they're, they're headed like up the slope. So I kind of backed out of there and then <clears throat> started, started, trying to, trying to beat them up the slope. So luckily there was a kind of a, there was enough rise that I could kind of skirt the side and, um, I could, without them seeing me, there wasn't just enough for rise in this, in the slope. So I ended up getting around them and then I got to this one point and it was kind of a, 
kind of like the, the cliff band kind of come in and it was like, you had to skirt around this little, this little goat trail just around the side. And I remember looking at it and uh, I'm kind of pinned down the sheep are on the one side. I'm trying to skirt around them. I'm probably uh, just about level uh, with the sheep. And uh, it's just like this little goat trail. And if it's maybe, if maybe a foot wide and four feet long, and it's like, you look down and if, if you slip or something like you're, you're in a world of hurt Oof. and uh, I, and I just, okay, like there's, there's no way around. So, okay, let's take it easy. And I just skirt through this little trail and I was like, Oh man, like this is getting, getting wild. And I end up on top of these little cliffs and then I, I creep out, creep out to the edge and I, and I look down and sure enough, there's three, four rams right, right below me. And, uh, it's a pretty, pretty steep ang- angle. Um, I'm on my knees and I kind of like creep close to the edge, poke my head up and, uh, I range, range the ram and it's, if, if it's 14 with the angle, it's, it's 14 yards. I think it was 20 yards line, like line of sight. And with the angle it's 14 yards. <laughs> and so I kind of like ease back, um, <clears throat> ease back, draw my bow and, um, and kind of like creep, creep towards the fan. I'm kind of like leaning forward, draw, like pivot up. And then just as soon as I, as soon as I like pivot up and like get my head over the edge, I just remember every single round there just looks straight at me. There's these four or five, five rams just, just staring right at me. And, um, it's a pretty steep angle shot and, uh, I let, let an arrow fly and, it for some reason it just it just sails high and kind of hits him like right in right in kind of right in kind of the no man's land like above above the lungs below the spine yeah. and um this arrow just sails right like right through him no no issue mm-hmm. and uh and i was just like instantly i was just like devastated and um so i go go down and, and um we find the arrow mm-hmm. and sure enough like the the front of the arrow has got a big the the front tip and one blade is is pretty mangled and kind of and bunched up and and what had happened is i didn't because i didn't i didn't go close enough to the edge so when i i kind of drew and then pivoted up and then the, this the shot was so steep that my sight was just just over the edge of the cliff but uh my arrow wouldn't have been no oh. and uh i just like ticked it off the off the very edge uh, of the rock and just, it just sailed like just a hair high. And, um, yeah, we, ne- we looked for them, never, never could find them. And, um, there was, there was like a little bit, there's like when you, when you put an arrow through, I mean, everyone's kind of done it. It's one of those things where, where it, where it happens and it, it sucks. But, um, when you look at the arrow, there's a little bit of blood on it, but there's, n- there's nothing of substance on there. And, um, there, there's really no, no real blood trail or anything. Uh, we looked for a while, but we couldn't find it. And, uh, yeah, I was pretty, pretty devastated, but at the same time, it's, it was kind of like, wow, this is like our first one in an archery area. And, and, um, like we could, we probably should have, should have got it done, but, uh, yeah. So after that, I was, I was, I was hooked for sure. Yeah. No kidding. I mean, um, <laughs> Archery sheep is a is an undertaking, man. It, it, I I think I can count on one hand the guys that I know that have gotten it done. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what was next? I mean, um, you guys have flown back in since. Yeah, so then we did one more archery on there, and then we saw a one really good ram, and the, the whole time we were kind of after that ram, and um, we got. I'd been within 60 of them, couldn't get a shot. And, and, um, Mark was, Mark was probably within 40 yards and and another group kind of come in and it was, it was kind of confusing as to like, which group was, which, and uh, he was probably 40 yards from just on the other side of this little ridge. And if he, if he cut over, he would have, uh, he would have had a good shot at it, but it's just, it's so hard to tell when you're down there and you're, I'm just watching him trying to, trying to like get him to look at me and to give him a hand signal like hey no 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 this way this way and um so he didn't get it and then uh, I knew they were coming up through this little gap and I but ran up as fast as I could and I was just like a hair too late they would have walked right past me and yeah. 
But um, just are like a really, really nice, like pretty ram f- for the area for sure. And um, but um, yeah, I couldn't get it done, but it was a really, really good trip. Um, I, on that trip, there was a couple other smaller rams that um, we could we pa- we could have shot. We passed. Why well, I, I could have shot, but we passed on. Um, I had like pretty like a like a decent eight year old ram walk right past at twenty yards, but. I mean, I was kind of, I was kind of of the mindset, like I don't, I never really wanted to risk it. So yeah, for me, especially if it's, especially if it's under the nose, I wanted to, I wanted to wait till I, I I knew I wanted to know, I think it's like, be sure that it's at at least nine. That way I, I was always so scared that if you hear, we didn't know as much back then as we do now. And, and even, even now I'd be probably of the same mindset, but, um, yeah, especially you f- never know what, what, what the CI is going to age it at. Right. So mm-hmm. you, you talk to different people, you're going to get diff- differing opinions and, and, um, I just never wanted to risk it. So no, let a few walk that, uh, we probably could have risked it and uh, it probably would have turned out, but, uh, that one, uh, yeah. that one picture on your uh, Instagram was that you with all them Rams around you? Cause that's a pretty epic photo. Uh, I think that one. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, there's, yeah, that would have been the same area. I, I forget if that was me or Mark, but, um, there's a couple, there's one, uh, I, photo from above and, uh, Mark was right, right down on a bunch of them. Um, yeah, it's probably, probably Mark, uh, photo that I took. And, um, yeah. So then after that, we, uh, my, my, my dad was looking at buying a jet boat. So I'm like, Oh, well, I know the, I know the boat, <laughs> I know the boat that you need. So then we end up finding a, a, a cool, really cool little firefish jet boat, 14 and a half feet, uh, locally. And that, that we ended up buying my old, my old man wanted it for, for doing some fishing up the upper pit and that kind of thing. So, um, we, we bought that. And then, so that next year it's like, well, we have, we have access to this boat. Let's, let's, um, we, we might, might as well use it while we have it. And, um, so then that was kind of the transition from, from doing the archery hunts to, uh, to doing a, a full, full rifle hunt. That jet boat sure opens up a lot of country though for you guys, right? You can just get places that some other guys can't. Oh, it's, 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 those things are wild, man. And, and, uh, what, what they're capable of those, those little, those, those firefishes and that, um, it's really, it's really unbelievable. Um, uh, just the, the water that you can go through and, and the different, once you kind of, yeah, once you, like you say, once you open your eyes to it and, and you just look at the, the country that's accessible by boats, um, there's so many different rivers around and, um, especially, especially up North, um, you can go so far, like hundreds of kilometers on the river and um different branches and rivers and yeah the, the options are really endless yeah i seen there's a company that yeah. makes uh like almost kind of like a uh, a dinghy style jet boat and they just put out boards with jet legs on them and them guys are going some wild places yeah, and, and, just, and hauling the whole moose out yeah, and I think those are stuff. Stuff. yeah yeah i talked to a guy maybe yeah like six months ago he was selling his he was selling a, a jet boat and, uh, that's what he was going to, I think he lived in Paris and he was doing a bunch of fishing in that. And, uh, I think they kind of stem from, I think what he was saying, they kind of come from Russia or something. And they're these, yeah, they're these red, like dingy boats. They put these outboard jets on them and they, they go anywhere basically. Yeah. They're which pretty, is, uh, they're which is pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty cool. So you, uh, so yeah. what's kind of next up on bat this year for, uh, for mountain hunts? Is that what you guys are mostly focused on now? It's just mountain hunting. Yeah. So now it's most usually one to two big, big trips a year. Um, yeah, the last few years, uh, Mark and I'll do, um, a jet boat hunt for, um, last, the first year we did it, it was kind of, it was mostly for sheep, but, um, elk was open, uh, towards the end. So, we hunted sheep for, uh, 10 days. And then the last two days we, we shot, a shot an elk. And then the, the last two years it's basically been, been, we've been at a time and a place where it's, it's sheep or sheep or bust basically. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of guys get bitten by the sheep bug pretty hard. Um, so, and, and I mean, it's hard to do everything. So if you're going to sheep hunt, you, you might as well just sheep hunt. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's one of those things that, um, yeah, it takes a lot of time. And then, um, yeah, we've had some bad luck and some, and some bad weather, but, um, yeah, you, you never know when you, what you get up there. Last, I, last two years has been, it's been crazy weather. I seen you guys did a late season, uh, goat hunt too. Um, yeah. And you had crampons on. I mean, I don't know. That's a little bit extreme for me, but <clears throat> what was, uh, how was that hunt? Would you guys do it again or? Yeah. So I've done three of those, three of those now. First one I did with, uh, with Nolan and Nick Treehern and, um, that was kind of, it was kind of an eye opening hunt. It was, it was, it was pretty, it was a pretty quick one. We only spent a couple nights in there, but, um, I was probably on that one. I was probably a little underprepared for sure. Um, I was the one night I was, I was pretty cold one night and, uh, but, uh, luckily, luckily we got it done early and, um, yeah, it, that was a, that was a really cool trip. And that's kind of, honestly, that trip was kind of, um, what opened, opened up my eyes to like, the photography stuff and, and doing it. Like at that time I was t- taking photos and stuff, but I had no real plan or anything. And then after chatting with, uh, with, with Nick a bunch, he's like, man, I don't, he's like, you guys are at a level. Like, I don't know why you guys don't aren't um, trying to find some clients and, and uh, getting paid for some of the stuff. And uh, he was a, he was huge help and, and definitely instrumental in um, basically starting. We, we, after that hunt, um, it would have been that March is when we kind of, we started, uh, Travis Del media basically. And nice. then, um, but that was a good one. Um, yeah. And then after that, I went with Jeff and it's basically same, same area. And then that was another quick one too. And, uh, shot, he shot a re- really nice goat. And then this last year, um, I was like, Oh, well I've had, two, two easy ones. Now two, two booners like this, this one's going to be a slug fest. And, uh, sure, sure enough it was, we had some, a lot of weather and just, it was just a lot of rain and, and not a whole, not a whole lot of good visibility, but, um, yeah, they're, they're definitely unique trips. And, and, uh, I've even asked other guys to, to go and you, you mentioned it guys, guys from work and they're basically like, yeah, there's no way that, <laughs> that I'm doing that. <laughs> that's where yeah. I'm at on it. It's, uh, it's out of my scope right now. I have so many other things to cross off the list and my, yeah. uh, my fall is always so stacked that if I came home and I was like, Hey, uh, mama, I know I'm going to be home for a month or so, but then I'm going to go climb a mountain in the snow to kill a goat. Maybe, probably not, but maybe, uh, is that cool? She would lose her mind. Yeah. So, see, so, yeah, I'm always of the mindset of, um, I try to spread everything out as, as much as possible. So it, 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 the timing works, works pretty good. So I can usually do early kind of mid early August. I get my sheep trip in and then September, hopefully like a big elk trip or, or a big, like mixed, mixed Northern hunt, like we did with the journal guys. Mm-hmm. And then kind of October, November is kind of mule deer, but more, more like weekend type stuff. And then, um, and then a February is enough, kind of enough times pass kind of after hunting season, um, that I can, uh, I can sell that one to the wife and then, yeah. <laughs> and then it's just, uh, just another trip. You, you space them out enough and then, uh, yeah, you maybe get an extra couple trips. Then. I, I, I do have to give my wife a lot of credit. She doesn't, she doesn't give me any flack about, um, like, you know, all fall I'm, I'm like in and out of the house. I'm, I'm hardly here, you know? And, yeah. uh, yeah, no, she's awesome. She's awesome. I just, I think with the way my, the way I, I I'm running it right now, I, I don't think I could pull it off. That, that's like when guys ask me about ducks, I mean, me, me and you were talking waterfowl the other night there and, uh, I've never done it. And I just like, I don't know how I would fit it in into what I have going on now. It's just like in the off season, I'm kind of like burnt out by the end of season too, to be honest, you know? Yeah. I mean, I really enjoy the the duck thing because it, it's kind of, it's always, it's a, it's a half day basically, or, or, or if that, like I can leave, leave home 5am kind of thing, get out there, hunt ducks and be, be home 
like be back home by 10 30 11 and it's kind of the kids are up and and um like the days kind of get going but you don't you don't really miss too much and um mm-hmm. it's not like you're gone a lot a long portion of the day so you, you, i basically only hunt when i hunt ducks i basically only hunt mornings and um yeah it's 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 pretty easy to get out um how like have it's just kind of a it's just relaxing like it's totally different you're kind of just hunkered down and you got a good spot and I, I always really like to get get there early and and um that first kind of like half hour even before before that you're allowed to shoot and uh it's just the ducks whipping by you have ducks like sitting in your decoys before before you're allowed to shoot them and there's you, sometimes you get like 15 ducks just sitting in your decoys and the dogs in the in her little blind, just whimpering away. Cause she wants to, she wants to go get them. And, yeah. uh, it's, it's just cool. Just cool mornings watching the sunrise and, and really you, the whole family's back home sleeping basically. So you, you don't feel like you're missing out on too much. Yeah. They that's call cool. that, uh, that, that's important. They call that a, they call that a gentleman's hunt when you're in home in time for, oh, yeah. for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, Hey, not to, uh, not to go back too far here, but, did I miss it? Did you guys end up killing a sheep yet? No. Not not yet, eh? Not yet. No. It's in the works. Is that it's in the works? Is that sort of the 2021 plan? Yeah, for sure. That's I that's all basically I think about every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you the 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 sheep needle is deep in the vein then, huh? Oh, it's it's all yeah, it's 100% 100% sheep. Like I like tree herons, one hundred percent goats. I would be um, the the one hundred percent sheep guy. I should name this one. Lauren likes Lauren like sheep. <laughs> 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 tree herons are rad, dude. Man, I like that guy. I, uh, uh, I he's fun to chat with. Or tree heron. I should just. I should, I always pronounce his name wrong. I'll never get it. I'll never get it right. Oh, I think I even said it wrong on the podcast a bunch. Like when bef- once we kill this call, I'm gonna ask you again how to say your last name, and then I'm gonna hang up on you guys and immediately record the intro so I don't screw it up. I, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm bad at pronouncing names. Yeah, isn't that Ray Wacy you- dog? Yeah, are you uh, mostly f- <laughs> are you mostly focusing on just archery sheep? Or are you guys gonna just get a sheep? with a rifle or whatever you can. Oh, it'll be now it'll be, it'll be rifle for the, yeah. for the next little bit. Um, we're doing a bunch of work with, uh, with gun works and that too. So, um, so now, yeah, we've gone from, uh, we've gone from archery sheep where you're trying to get within like 40, 50, 60 yards to, uh, you gotta walk around the bush with a, with a gun works now where, um, like, Seven seven hundred yards is really not out of the the realm of possibility. That's wild. Yeah. It it it's a, yeah. it's out of the possibility for me. I suck with a gun. <laughs> 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 um, right on, man. So so big fly in for twenty twenty one, and um, w- we should talk to a little bit about your guys' work. Who who are some of the clients and stuff you guys are dealing with? So Gunworks is a big one. Uh, we've done some work for Weatherby in the past, Vortex in the past. Um, we do a little bit for some some archery companies, um, Expedition, oh, cool. um, Hamski Rests, and a couple other smaller ones. And then um, new to this year is it's kind of kind of up in the air. The, um, we're doing some stuff for for Kuyu this year, some photo stuff for Kuyu. Uh, we've we worked for their like done gear day events and stuff in the past. Um, Dallas who, who runs the uh, Kui Canada is a, is a great guy. And I've been lucky to be kind of come friends with him over the last, uh, mm-hmm. the last few years. So we, we help him out all, all the local like gear day shows and atmosphere trade show and that kind of thing. Just, mm-hmm. uh, just helping run the booth. And even last year, I think he was in last year, he was in Alberta with the booth at the, um, wild sheep, Alberta banquet. And then, um, I was basically, I was in charge of the, uh, the Abbotsford, the Abbotsford booth for, for basically the whole time. Um, so that, that, that was kind of cool. So, uh, we've had a bit of it in there. And then the guy that we, um, the marketing guy that we worked with Weatherby with, um, he, he got headhunted and moved over to Kuyu uh, recently. So that was a huge help. 
And um, so we've been talking with him a bunch and we'll, so we'll be shooting a little bit for, uh, for Kuyu this year, which is, which is pretty cool. And then, um, yeah. Do you, do you find that maybe kind of mixing what you love with and turn, kind of turn it into a job is going to get old fast? Cause kind of one of my fears is, you know, I don't know if I really would want to be in the industry as a, in that aspect. Cause it'd be, I would just be worried. I'd start hating it after a while, you know, I don't know. No, I, I can definitely, definitely see that. And it, it does change the the dynamic a fair bit. Um, you, you kind of, I, I really, I do enjoy the, the business side of it and, and kind of like, it's just a new challenge and, and trying to find clients and send emails and as, as frustrating it is, as it is when you're, when you're sending emails and you work on, I mean, you, you do some like, some off, you feel so good. Sometimes you make these proposals and you get some stuff dialed in and you send this, this cool email, send some photos and make a PDF. And like, you, you're like, all right, this is, this is good. Like, there's no way this, you, you kind of custom tailor it exactly towards the company and you do a lot of research and, and then you send it and then you just hear crickets and you're just like, ah, but, um, yeah, it, it, it definitely, it definitely changes things. Um, there's a lot of hunts that I would, that I would, that I would like to do with different people that kind of maybe doesn't work as well. Cause, um, you're, you're kind of focused on photos and, and this and that. And then, but at the, at the same time, it's kind of a different aspect, like going on, going on hunts, like with the journal one this year, where, um, with those four guys and, and kind of just stepping back and being like, okay, I'll just, just take photos. Like I wasn't going to. Basically, I wasn't going to shoot anything unless it was a stone sheep. And, um, I kept on, like, I had an option to shoot that caribou and, um, and, uh, but I knew cause James, James was kind of, it was his first hunt and, um, he, he was kind of like, you know, what, I'm just, I'm just here to kind of take it in. Like you, you guys are all up, like you guys are up first, like get it, get it done. And I, I just want to like learn and help out. And I mean, he was awesome, awesome dude. Like, but, uh, I was like, you know what? I looked at him like, James, you got a, uh, you got a, you got a boot tag. And he's like, yeah, he's like, all right, bud, like you're, you're up. Like I'm, I'm taking photos. And, um, so I, it's, it's kind of a different mindset and, it, and it's, I find it really interesting just to, just to s- kind of step back and, and not be as involved in the, in the hunting per se, and then just step back and just have like a, a goal of, of, um, getting some banger photos and, um, yeah, it's kind of just a different, different thing. So when, the, when, the ones that go ahead, I really enjoy going. the hunts where I really enjoy the hunts where you're with, with people and you're just there to take photos. And, um, that's kind of your focus. Like they're doing the hunting and you're just taking photos. And then, and then the, the ones where like with our sheep trips, like Mark and I, you're kind of, you're kind of trying to balance the photos, like trying to get photos for clients and stuff and try to, like kill a sheep yourself. And then, I mean, sometimes your photos suffer or, or the hunting suffers, right? Like you can't, you can't do both well. So yeah, you, one usually of the, on the, on the trips where you yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What I was going to say is like, for me, before we get off the work flash hunting thing, I was like, I've had a lot of opportunities over the years to guide for some pretty big guys. And I've always said no, um, not because, you know, I don't want a guide or I don't want to make money in the outdoor industry. It's just because I just look at it as we're on, like I'm on this planet for, you know, maybe a hundred years. If I'm lucky, I got like maybe good 50 years of, of, you know, time that I can spend hunting. I just, it's hard for me just to watch it, uh, watch somebody else, um, go ahead and fill all their tags. Right. And I spend all season just packing meat. It's kind of scared me to, to turn it into a job as you yeah. know, I would, I just, I have a hard time with it. Right. And, but the other half of me is like, man, yeah. how cool would it be to, you know, pack moose quarters for money. And, uh, I don't know. It's just, I think everybody's different, but for me, it's just, a, it's been a hard hurdle for me to get over, you know, for sure. And, and I mean, we're lucky that we're not, we're I like, I have a good job and, um, it's not like this is kind of just, this has kind of always been just an, kind of an excuse and, and just, if I could use this to go, to go on a couple hunts that I wouldn't normally go on or do a couple trips that I'd norm I wouldn't normally do then. And, and that like, that would, that was kind of like what the, what the goal is 
is it's, and it's not really about making like making a ton of money, but if I, but if I can cover some of the costs from hunting season and I can do a couple of trips that I, I wouldn't be able to do otherwise, then, then that's, that, that was kind of always a, that was the win in, um, in our books basically. Yeah, for sure. And that's kind of like too with, you know, I would guide for guys if I could trade, you know, like I would come guide for free if I, if on the back end, you know, we could, you know, trade some hours for, towards a grizzly that's kind of my main thing right now <laughs> yeah like a, yeah <laughs> so there you yeah, go awesome, awesome man cool. cool lauren well hey man thanks for coming on and um uh how can people find you on social media i'm just at uh at Trousdale media and um yeah if anyone's got any questions or anything just uh we're pretty good with trying to um get through any messages or anything like that so um, just yeah, Trousdell Media, and then uh, that's about it. Great on, Lauren. It's been uh, it's been great chatting with you and sharing our morning coffee. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review. If you want to support the podcast, please check out the gear on our website at www.wildernesslocals.net. <laughs>